Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Jen, also known as Not Like The Others, and this channel's all about friendship bracelets. And I would just like to wish you all a very happy Halloween since it is October 31st, the day I'm uploading this video. And today being Halloween could not be more perfect for today's wall hanging. In today's video, we're going to be going through a super chill, not with me time-lapse video. A little while ago, I posted on my Instagram story asking, what pattern you guys would rather see. I had posted an Oogie Boogie pattern from Nightmare Before Christmas, and I'd also posted a Stardew Valley pattern. It was of a sleeping cat, like the cat that you get on your farm in Stardew Valley. And I just wanna clarify that when I say I posted these, I did not create these patterns. I just mean that I shared them to my Instagram story. I found these patterns on bracelet.book.com, and then I threw up the poll on my Instagram story, and you guys voted for the oogie boogie pattern so that is what we are making in today's video and I'm going to be doing a lot more polls on my Instagram story in the future so if you'd like to participate in ideas for future videos be sure to follow me over there so this oogie boogie is pattern number 142531 on bracelet.com and this is an alpha pattern the dimensions are 45 by 50 so we have 45 columns and 50 rows and at the beginning of this video you can see me cutting my base strings using Using the Aunt Lydia's crochet thread and since we have 45 base strings I went ahead and cut 23 strands of the Aunt Lydia's crochet thread so that when we fold them in half and attach them to our dowel we are left with 46 base strings and then when I went across with my first row I just skipped one of the base strings and then that way I'm left with 45 base strings and this is what I always do when I have an odd number of base strings for a wall hanging that I'm making just round up to the next even number and then skip one base string in your first row. This pattern also uses 10 different colors which you can see at the beginning of the video as well. And for all of my leading string what I actually use to make the pattern itself is DMC embroidery floss. And these 10 colors include black, orange, blue, pink, fuchsia, three shades of green, and two shades of purple. And as you already saw I went ahead and wrapped all of those colors on plastic bobbins. And since this pattern uses so many different colors and they're so bright I really wanted to get them right. I had a few of the colors already but there were a few colors that I had to go and find. In particular I had a lot of trouble finding that pinky purpley color in the top right hand corner of the bracelet that's making that little spider in the background. I didn't have any color like that in my storage whatsoever so I headed to Walmart which is very close to me and I'm also very grateful that my Walmart carries DMC embroidery floss because I know a lot of Walmarts don't. I don't think all of the Walmarts do just a few of them. However, my Walmart really doesn't have that much of a color selection, so they didn't have anything like this color either. So we ended up driving an hour away so we could go to Michael's just for this one color, just to get one skein of embroidery floss. I did end up grabbing a couple other things while I was there just to make the trip a little bit more worthwhile, but honestly, even if I just got that one skein of embroidery floss, I think it would have been worth it. Just because it matches the pattern so well, and once the pattern is all done, I think all of the colors just really pop and I'm just really happy with the color selection. For a full list of materials, I'm using Aunt Lydia's crochet thread size 10, DMC embroidery floss, I've attached my base strings to a five inch dowel, and I'll also be using some fabric glue to secure the back of my wall hanging. And the reason why I don't really use DMC embroidery floss for my base strings is simply because it's too expensive. I can get a whole ball of the Aunt Lydia's crochet thread for about $5, whereas I would have to pay a lot more to get the same amount of embroidery floss. So yeah, that's my little budgeting tip for friendship bracelets. If you make a lot of alpha bracelets, maybe consider switching to something you can buy in bulk for your base strings. Now, obviously this video has been sped up a lot. Um, to be specific, it has been sped up 2,000 times, but altogether this wall hanging took me about 14 and a half to 15 hours to complete. And I think the reason why it took me so long was because there are so many color switches in this pattern. I truly don't know what I was thinking. We have colors all over the place in this pattern, and as you can see in the video, I am switching colors very often. And I find the real trick with all of these color switches is just not pulling my strings too tightly. 
But even though it took a little bit of extra time, I think all of the color switches really makes the pattern that much more intricate and so much more interesting to look at. And maybe that's why you guys voted for Oogie Boogie, or maybe it's just because it is Halloween and tis the season. Then again, I guess Nightmare Before Christmas is more of a Christmas movie with a Halloween twist on it. I don't know. Do you think Nightmare Before Christmas is a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? Let me know in the comments. But either way, we are making the villain from Halloween Town in Nightmare Before Christmas. So this is a Halloween character for sure. And if you've never seen The Nightmare Before Christmas before, definitely go watch it. It's on Disney Plus. It came out in 1993. It's a animated movie. Actually, it's a claymated movie. It was written by Tim Burton, directed by Henry Selleck. The music is by Danny Elfman. And basically our story starts in Halloween Town with Jack the Pumpkin King and this whole town is in charge of making Halloween amazing every single year. Like being spooky scary skeletons is their forte and Jack is the best of the best. However, Jack is kind of getting tired of the same old thing and he's finding his whole routine a little bit mundane. So Jack is depressed. He's trudging through the forest haphazardly and stumbles upon a door which leads to Christmas Town. So then Jack goes inside and experiences Christmas for the first time. He absolutely loves it and wants to bring that Christmas spirit back to Halloween Town. And Jack loves Christmas so much that he has decided he's going to give Santa Claus the year off and the community of Halloween Town is going to take over Christmas this year. So they're really just taking it for their own. They just want to make it their own thing. So in order to do this, they need to get Santa Claus out of the way, or as they like to call him, Mr. Sandy Claus. So Jack orders three kids that live in the village to go kidnap Santa Claus, but these three kids also work for another character called Mr. Oogie Boogie, and that is who is in our wall hanging today. So the three kids bring Santa Claus to Oogie Boogie, even though Jack specifically asked them not to, but these kids like to wreak havoc. And again, they do kind of work for Oogie Boogie. So they're going to bring Santa Claus to him so he can do whatever he wants to do. And even though Jack is trying to get Santa Claus out of the way so he can take over Christmas, Oogie Boogie really is the villain in this story. Jack just wanted Santa Claus out of the way. He wanted the kids to put Santa Claus somewhere comfortable and safe. Um, but Oogie Boogie literally wants to eat Santa and is going to cheat to do so and is going to do whatever it takes to do so. So yeah, he's pretty evil. But in the end, Jack realizes that the regular world is kind of horrified by their idea of Christmas. This whole Halloween twist on Christmas is really terrifying everyone and that's not what he wanted. And he realizes that this is really not what he's meant to do. He's going to go back and fix everything and put everything back to the way it was. But first he has to go back and rescue Santa Claus. So Jack goes back to Oogie Boogie's lair, he fights Oogie Boogie, and he actually pulls his seams apart, and that's when we discover that Oogie Boogie is actually a bag of bugs, which is very disgusting. But then Jack saves Santa, Santa saves Christmas, and everything goes back to normal. Oh yeah, and at the very end of the movie, Jack realizes that he has feelings for his friend Sally, who's been trying to get his attention the entire movie, and she actually tried to go save Santa Claus, but, you know, that didn't work. So yeah, that is my very quick, off-the-cuff, uh, kind of rough summary of Nightmare Before Christmas. If you've never seen it before, I definitely recommend that you check it out. It is definitely a cult classic, and when I was an emo kid in high school, let me tell you, everything in my room and all of my accessories were Nightmare Before Christmas. I was one of those kids. I, I hate to admit it, but I was. So we're just about to finish up the time lapse portion of the video here. We just have, uh, I think, one more row left here. And it definitely did get a lot easier once we got to the bulk of Oogie Boogie's body, just because there weren't quite as many color switches. And now I'm just cleaning up the back of my wall hanging. I'm just cutting all of the excess string. I used to take the time to tie all of the strings 
strings in the back together, but now I just cut them all and glue them down. And then to tie off the bottom of my wall hanging, I divided my base strings into four different sections, and then I tied them off using four different gathering knots. And I thought it would be really cool to make each of these gathering knots in different colors that are already in the pattern, just to make all of the colors really pop even more. And if you wanna learn how to tie this gathering knot, I have included it in my Knots You Must Know tutorial. I've actually included all of the knots I've made in this video in that tutorial. I have it linked in the description below. In that video, I go over gathering knots, Lark's head knots, which is what I use to attach my base strings to my dowel, and any other knots that you'll need to know when you're making friendship bracelets. I used to just let my base strings hang like a fringe on the bottom of my wall hangings, but I really like the way that the gathering knots look. And after I've cut all of my excess base strings, I'm just going to secure the back of my wall hanging using some fabric glue, and I'm just applying that using an old paintbrush. And here is the finished product. I am actually obsessed with how this wall hanging turned out. I love the colors so much. And here is another quick look at the back. The glue is all dry now. It's kind of a mess back there, but you know, nobody needs to see that. And that is all for today's video. Again, I hope you have a very happy Halloween. I will be adding this wall hanging to my Etsy shop, which I will leave in the description below, as well as all of my other socials if you'd like to follow me there. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. I hope you drink lots of water today. I hope you have your favorite snack today and I will see you in the next video. Bye.